of Lynchpins of Liberty and Larry Nordvig, Executive Director of the Richmond Tea Party. Kevin, let me go to you first. Um, how high up do you have good evidence to prove, or how, how high up does this scandal go, and what's your evidence in support of it? Well, hi, Greta. Thanks for having me back. Um, I think it's pretty clear that the evidence leads all the way to the top. The president the had top? a meeting with his... The, president. the top is, is the president. Okay. Yeah, the president had a meeting with William Wilkins, his political appointee to the IRS, on April 23, 2012. Just two days later, orders were issued to, uh, new guidelines were issued in these Tea Party cases. I think there's, it's clear, though, that this started as far back as 2009. The president began intimidating those of us from in being involved in the political debate by his suggestion that these organizations were nefarious or that we had been getting uh, foreign money and things of that nature. This ratcheted itself up through Congress. Congress began sending letters of demand to the IRS. And before we know it, the IRS is actively involved in in viewpoint discrimination, picking us out, sele selecting us because of the names of our organizations and what we believed. Um, Larry, um, this April 23rd, 2012 meeting that uh, Kevin just uh, spoke about, um, do you know what the White House says that meeting with William Wilkins was about? Well, I don't think they're making any direct connection that, yes, it was about IRS targeting or whatnot. I'm not I think Kevin is because he talks about these guidelines. Yeah, I think the the smoking gun is that there was a meeting, and the next day there was more evidence of targeting. We found out later, so it's it's almost an indirect kind of an inference. Well, of what I think we call meeting. it circumstantial evidence, which right. in some instances. But you mean it's I mean it, it, it would be sort of, it, it would be helpful to know what the White House said went on at that meeting. That would be very helpful, and I think that's what congressional investigations are all about. Um, they want people under oath to, to tell the truth, and that's what needs to happen here. We need to know what happened in that meeting. Kevin, um, the lawsuit that was filed um, some time ago um, in connection with the IRS scandal has now been expanded. It's been, it was amended, I think, uh, it was filed last May, I think amended this summer, and amended again now? Yes, every time it's been amended is when we learn more through the congressional investigation or otherwise through media. We learn, learn of more individuals who are involved in this case, and I can't remember them all by name now because that length, it is becoming quite a lengthy list. But we also learned that Lois Lerner herself had up to 1,600 pages of emails, including 30 pages of taxpayer, confidential taxpayer information, in her private email account. And I would like to know what she intended to do with that or what she did with that. And, of course, what I'd like more is to have a chance to uh, conduct the, uh, see what happens at these uh, depositions. Um, Larry, what's your thought about, uh, still, about this ongoing, it, it's just, justice moves very slowly. Um, it, it does move slowly in a way, but we do want to be thorough. We don't want to rush it and, and blow the outcome, basically. That doesn't just come from me. That comes from speaking with staffers and, and actual congressmen that are on the House Ways and Means Committee. Um, really what we're doing here is we're smoking out the rats from a, a corrupt ship of state, if you will. And we need to find out exactly who knew what, when they knew it, how high it goes. And what we're finding is there are more and more names, like Kevin was saying, being added to this list. Um, in fact, I can rattle off three right now. Former Commissioner Shulman is new on the list. Um, we've also got Sarah Ingram, who I I think is very significant in this case, and Willie Wilkins that Kevin was mentioning too. Kevin, I literally have 10 seconds left. When did deposition start where you put people under oath in this case? Gosh, I, unfortunately that's a better question for Jay Sekulow, our great attorney at the ACLJ, but Greta, it's probably going to be after the first of the year.